Hello, my friends. Welcome back to The Morning Mindset. I hope you are ready to get your minds aligned with the truth of God today, just for this day, and then we'll worry about tomorrow, tomorrow. Actually, we won't even worry. We'll trust, but you get the idea. Hey, before you get too far into this, let me invite you to hang around after all the music fades at the end of this episode for 60 seconds of prayer, 60 seconds, 60 seconds (laughs) of prayer for world revival. And also, I wanted to let you know, uh, I've been working for about three or four years on a fiction book series based in kind of medieval times where a group of people are fighting dragons. Uh, And it's just kind of from a love of fantasy literature that I've had in the past, but also from stories that I told my kids when they were younger. And I finally got the third book in the series, the final book in this series published. I would love for you to check them out. You can find a link to my Dragon Slayer Chronicles series in the episode notes for this episode. It's at carrygreen.com slash dsbooks. All right, let's get going on our Identity in Christ series that we've been working on. We are looking at Romans 8, 28. Now, this is a verse that is a very well-known verse and one that I think can be used in some rather flippant ways. I mean, for example, if someone's going through a very hard time and you just quote Romans 8, 28 to them, and you do so in a manner that kind of communicates, well, if you just understood this verse, everything would be fine. Well, that's not quite how this verse should be used. This verse is something that we as believers in Christ should use in a kind of a a preventional sense, in a preventative sense. Maybe that's a better way to say it. We need to be thinking about the truths this verse communicates before the hard times come, because that's where we're able to shape our mindset where we're able to shape our heart outside the crucible, outside the crunch time. And then when the crunch time or the crucible comes, we're able to apply the truths of this verse better because they're already in our hearts. So what does Romans 8, 28 say? It says, and we know that for those who love God, all things work together for good for those who are called according to his purpose. Now, This version is the English Standard Version, and it puts two disclaimers on the verse, and all versions do that. But here in the ESV, it puts one at the beginning, one at the end of the verse. First is this truth that we're looking at is true for those who love God. Okay, we all could probably point to examples of people we know who clearly don't love God. So this is, this is for people who truly love God. Now, the second disclaimer is, it's for those who are called according to his purpose. All right, now that's a little bit different even than the people who love God. I've met plenty of people in my life who would say, I love God, but yet they've not submitted their life to the Lordship of Christ. They have not stepped into his calling through faith, through what he's done on the cross. And so they're not truly Christians. They're not truly believers in Christ who are called according to his purpose. Okay, so there's our two disclaimers. You have to be a Christian and you have to be a Christian who loves God. And what is the promise? Well, it's a mind-blowing promise that all things work together for good. Now, think about the broad nature of that statement. All things work together for good. In your life, in my life, in the situations we face, all things are working together for our good and for God's glory. Now, as we ponder this in view of our identity in Christ, what does it have to do with our identity? Well, it tells us that we are a person who God has set apart to do good works in our lives, to do good things in our lives. And that even the difficulties and the hard times and the struggles and the losses can, and not only can, are used for God's good work in our lives. And friends, I don't know what you're going through right now. I receive emails from people all the time who tell me their story, and some struggling with mental issues in the family, some struggling with sicknesses, some struggling with not enough funds for the month, you know, various things. And friends, I want to assure you, not in a trite way, like I mentioned at the beginning of the episode, but I want to assure you that because you are called and because you love God, God is working together all things for good in your case. Jesus, thank you so much for such a powerful promise 
enable us to ponder it, to meditate on it, to think it through before the crunch times happen so that when they come, we are ready to face them in strong faith. Lord, help us now to make a determination in our hearts and minds that we will apply this truth when the hard times come. We won't just give it lip service and we won't forget about it, but rather we will trust you that all things are working together for our good. Thank you, Jesus. We pray it in your name. Amen. Lord Jesus, we have made this term revival in the church mean so many things. But Lord, what it really means is that your people come to a place of repentance, a place of aligning their hearts and their minds with your truth and with your rules and guidelines for living so that our lives become a reflection of your holiness. And then that work that you do in our lives and through our lives extends out into the world. And the world gets to not only see, but gets to experience the amazing wonder of God. So Lord, I'm asking you to revive your people's hearts. Turn us toward you in greater faith, in greater repentance, in greater confirmation to your purposes for our lives, Lord. If that means we need to make different entertainment choices, so be it. If that means we need to make different choices in our dietary habits, so be it. If that means we need to make different choices in friendships, so be it, Jesus. Bring revival to your people.